Welcome to the Happy Healthy Life Podcast with your hosts, Rob and Randy, who reveal the truth, the lies, and confusion about health so that you are no longer the victim to mainstream medical dogma and you are the hero to your own happy, healthy story. Hey there, and welcome back to the Happy Healthy Life Podcast with your host, Rob and Randy. And we are the, the Happy, happy healthy, healthy Guys. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Today is our re- Real Talk episode. I know it's been a minute since we've done a Real Talk. Uh, we've been uh, in Spain. We've been at a, uh, you were in Spain. I was at a mentorship conference with a group of amazing people in the health and wellness um, community. And then this last weekend, we were at the um, biohacker conference put on by Dave Asprey. And at the same time, a Hack Your Health conference was going on that we had a lot of uh, friends of ours that were attending that in Austin, Texas. This next week, you've got a health optimization summit happening. So, I mean, there's- I mean, heck, yesterday we spent all day recording content- We did. For a documentary we're going to be in uh, on basically life after 50. So me just turning 50 a few weeks ago, you're about to be 53. You know, the real flex is after 50. What happens next, that 80, 90, 100, 100 plus. So that's super exciting as well. Uh, and I thought the content we recorded yesterday was insane. We can maybe even talk about some of that because those principles that we're talking about, they don't just help you get to 50 happy and healthy. They help you get to the next level happy and healthy because really that is the that is our God-given birthright. It's living strong, healthy, vibrant, well, full of passion and purpose, well beyond 80 to 120 years. Yeah, and I mean, really, as we even dive into, dive into it and, and talking about like even going to the the, the biohacking conference, one of the things that we had talked about is before we, re, we really didn't like the name biohacking no. because bio meaning life and hacking, <laughs> hacking life. Why would we want to hack yeah. life? Really, it, it all is biology. But now having come back from it, we have a better appreciation for what's really happening mm-hmm. and what's really happening. And, and just take our program, for example. What it is that we're doing is we're biohacking metabolism for the purpose of healing your metabolism is quickly and as efficiently as possible because it only takes five weeks to do it so that now these people are yes you're losing weight okay um average person in our program losing female losing 22 plus pounds average male losing 30 plus and we see even higher numbers than that but i only say that because these people are doing this in a way because our technology gets them that happening in only five weeks what we learned at this biohacking conference is we are the only metabolism program out there that has a system and technology to get people those results that quickly so that we can hurry up and be living the rest of this life that we have on planet Earth. Yeah, you're not you're not going much less to 50, 60, 70, 80 plus without a healthy, strong metabolic profile. And we were approached by many health leaders at this conference because there really just isn't a lot out there in that regard. And, you know, with our story and overcoming our own challenges, me with late stage cancer, you with a back injury and a 65 pound weight gain and a struggle you'd kind of dealt with even as a child with your weight, those were all metabolic conditions. And so out of our crisis, we, this whole company was born and we really have a, a very powerful system that we put together that makes it so simple. One of the questions we kept getting, it was kind of cracking me up. I don't know if you were catching on to this, but they're like, every person that talked to us, they were trying to, they wanted to make it more complicated. They wanted to make it harder. They wanted it to be um, only, they, they needed more, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? They needed more complicated strategies to somehow do something. And I think it's because they really feel like it's impossible to heal something that profound in such a short amount of time. So, you know, are you guys running tons of labs and blood work and, you know, what blood type are you? And and all these funny questions, I'm like, no, 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 wait a second. It isn't that hard. It's really very simple. When you understand what metabolism is, what drives it and what obviously accelerates it and, and really brings it back up to normal, and one of the biggest myths I think people believe, and we talked about it yesterday in the documentary, is that just as you're getting older, your metabolism slows down. 
And obviously, that is not true. In fact, the largest study of its kind, Dr. Rob, came out in 2021. Herman Ponser from Duke University. What they showed was that when you're born, you obviously have a rock star metabolism. And then really that first year of life, you're burning tons of calories. The body's really, you know, it's rapidly growing and replicating mm -hmm. new cells. But then at about the age of one year old, all the way up until your late teens, your metabolism actually starts to slow down. Now, it's still very, very high, but it slows down. Here's the key point, because a lot of people think, well, you know, once I got into college, got the freshman 15, got married, had some kids, got into my 20s and 30s, things are slowing down. The data doesn't support that. What they showed is from age 20 to age 60, that your metabolism doesn't even change. What? Yeah, I know. It's like, <laughs> what? I thought I, I thought my metabolism slowed down. I'd say like at 45 or 55. Now, you may be gaining weight and you may not be as healthy as you used to be, but you can't be blaming your age. And here's the best part. After 60, it only slowed down about 7% a decade. So even into your 80s, you still could have an incredibly healthy metabolism. And I think a lot of the drop off after 60 wasn't because you're cursed with some age problem. It really is because you're probably losing muscle mass because as you get older, if you don't know how to keep your metabolism strong and you don't know the right nutritional strategies, you could be losing muscle. They call it sarcopenic obesity where you're this skinny fat person. You lose your muscle, you gain all the body fat, and that's a big, big problem, which is preventable. It is preventable. And I think as you were saying that, yeah, people just want to make it way more complicated, right? Because I think it's because we've been trained to think that it's all about the science or all about the research or all about this supplement or that supplement. Yeah. And it's just because of years and years and years and years of people just throwing all of this stuff at people. Totally. And so it's like that, uh, that, that, that quote, I don't know if this is in the Bible where <laughs> it came from, but it's uh, that quote that said, God made the simple to confound the wise, right? People end up, it seems yeah. like people start getting, you know, smarter and smarter about less and less, right? Yeah, the, 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 more, <laughs> the more you know, the less you know about anything. It's and so it's, true. And that's the whole thing. It's like in the medical system has kind of done a great job of, of almost making like, you know, to get incredible results in your life. It's almost this untouchable concept. Like we are the smartest people in the world. We've got all these pills and tests and research and hospitals and all these billions and billions of dollars, and that's the only way you get healthy is you have to come to us and we make it complicated. But we already know this complicated bankrupting a system called healthcare in America, which is all it is is sick care, has us more sick, more disease, more overweight, more medicated, more depressed, really than ever before. And if you don't believe it, even in your own life, which I, you know, our vision is that everybody would be happy and healthy, but if you just look around, it's worse than it's ever been. I remember just uh, this morning, just a few hours ago, I go into the coffee shop and, you know, I try to always be intentional. And I, you and I both have morning routines where we're practicing gratitude. I, you know, I'm praying, I'm reading my Bible, I'm potentially exercising on that day. I'm really can't wait to take on the world. And so when I go somewhere, when you go somewhere, especially when we go somewhere together, our attitude, our positivity, our energy is huge. So I go into the coffee shop today and I'm just looking around and I'm making eye contact. I'm smiling and I couldn't find anybody today in the, in the coffee shop that smiled back. They almost looked away. Uh -huh. They almost, um, they just were like these depressive, sad, poor energy states, several people. And I couldn't hardly find anybody that seemed happy about their life. And this is first thing in the morning. I can't imagine how they're feeling later in the day. So it just kind of broke my heart. Cause I'm like, man, this isn't right. This is not normal. This is common now. It's pervasive, but it's not the way God designed us. We really are, you know, designed in his image. And he does not make us to be sick and depressed and sad. He gives us so many reasons to be thankful. So I don't know. It's just, uh, it's not even just the physical health. It's the emotional health. It's the mental health. And all those really are. Uh, you know, they're key pieces to us being happy and healthy. Yeah, it's one of the things that we always talk about is being intentional yes. about your life, right? What is your intention for today? Even I, I heard somebody talking about this re recently, and, and people ask me this a lot because they know that, like, I journal, I pray, I meditate, I, you know, do all do all the things. They're like, what do I, 
somebody asked me the other day, so do you just like start writing in your journal, like writing out all of your feelings? And so, <laughs> you know, so, so a simple thing that you can do is, is this acronym right here so that you can start your day and actually smile back at someone and be happy about the day is MVP is this is your the, the this can not make your your morning routine any more simple than this <laughs> meditate visualize what it is that you desire for your life and pray those three things right there and then after that you can journal i like to start off by writing down you know what am i grateful for today yeah something that i've started writing down that i didn't write before is when it's all said and done, there's the last question that I ask myself as I'm going through this. Well, the second one would be, what am I winning at um, today? The next question that I ask myself is, what do I need to let go of? Mm -hmm. And I was, I was writing that down today as I'm like, you know what? I need to let go of just negative thinking. And like you said, whether it be negative thinking towards somebody else, maybe I need to just let go of the anger, the animosity that I have towards that person and forgive them. I need to let go of that and then change that thinking to something that's more positive. And then the last question that I asked that I've been asking myself is when it's all said and done, what are they going to say about me? And there's this, this, there's a Japanese word called that's, that's in talk. Okay. The Japanese word in talk means good done for the purpose of serving. In other words, it's doing something good for someone without expecting anything in return. So when it's all said and done, I wanna be known as that person who did so much good for others for the sake of serving and not expecting anything in return. No, that's beautiful. So, it's what's the quote that people may not forget what you told them, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Totally. And I think that's what you're talking about it there. Is. It's a really important. And you know, when we go places, it's, we are intentional. You know, where can we not go where people remember <laughs> who we are for no other reason than we just were positive. We were encouraging. We had a, a great attitude. We were, you know, we were, didn't take ourselves too seriously. You know, laughing is a part of being healthy. You know, the body can laugh and it can cry. And those, both of those emotions are healing <laughs> to your body. Yet a lot of times it's, you know, you take yourself too seriously or you're, you're, you're not uh, able to show that you have emotion or you can cry or you can be upset. Those things are normal. And I think we show up and we're just these normal, happy, healthy dudes who care about life, care about the things that matter, that want people to feel great about themselves as well. So I even I, I, it takes me back to uh, that dinner we went to recently uh, when we were at the biohacking conference. And we took some of our good friends to one of our favorite yeah. restaurants in Bishop Arts here in Dallas. Written by the season. Yeah, it's our good friends there, Breton and Haley, uh, incredible people that we've met uh, a few years ago there. They own a coffee shop there, they own the restaurant, and all the staff, everybody behind the bar, all the servers, when we show up, they literally are so excited, not because we're special, but because they know that, hey man, when Rob and Randy show up, this is gonna be a lot of fun, and it's so great to bring people that we love and care about to a place like this. And people are always blown away. Like, how do these guys, how does everybody know you here? So, have y'all been coming here for 10 years? It's like, no, but when we show up, we want to make a difference. And I think that's so important when you go somewhere, show up, be present, be intentional. Yeah, I think it's instead of showing up to the party, we bring the party. We do. Bring it's, it's what is, it was what ends up happening. Yeah. And and yeah. yeah, speaking of being intentional, like there's a reason why we go to the restaurant. It's farm to table food. Yes. They don't use seed oil. Yep. It's not vegetarian. They've got <laughs> meat on oh the gosh. menu. Yeah. And yeah. so we want to make sure that when we're bringing guests somewhere that they can see how it is that we eat, what it yeah. is that we do on a daily basis and we're being intentional with those things, not just taking people to a restaurant just because um, we've got a lot of people in town, we're gonna go to wherever. No, we're gonna know, we're gonna go, plan ahead so that we can be intentional with what it is that we're putting into our bodies. That is so important for us and people always ask us, you know, okay, how do you go out to eat yeah. and no. still do what it is that, that you've been doing? And it's because we're intentional about it. We Very. look ahead of time. We ask questions. Yeah, it's okay to ask questions too, by the way. We always ask, hey, if they ask you, do you have any food allergies? We say yes. We uh, Number one, we're allergic to BS. And the second thing we're allergic to is going to be seed oil. 
So we just would ask he could make sure prepare all of our food in grass fed butter or some type of animal based fat. And nobody ever has an issue with that. And they'll let you know if they can or they can't. A lot of restaurants can't. A lot can, but don't be afraid to ask because a lot of us, we work so hard on our, our lifestyle and the, and the food we put in our body. And then we go to a restaurant and then God knows what they're cooking in. And I can tell you, we know what they're cooking in. They're cooking in rancid seed oil. So you just got to be willing to say, you know what, I'm not going to compromise. And that's one of the reasons why we love supporting places like that. Plus all their meat is from local ranchers, which is great if you can buy local. That's so important for having a happy, healthy planet. A lot of times the food industry, they're putting everything in these grocery stores and hey, we go to grocery stores, but if you can get your vegetables or your fruits or your meats and you can get those from local farmers, yeah. local ranchers, that is being intentional. That is being very, uh, that's being, what's the word I'm looking for? That's being uh, intentional about making sure that, hey, listen, we care enough about the planet. We care enough about the local people. We care about the local economy. That's all about creating happy, healthy communities. And I think that's so important when we talk about the happy, healthy life. That's communities taking responsibility for each other. So if you've got a local farm, a local rancher, I'll go get my lo uh, local raw milk from a farm here in Dallas. Go get your food local. It makes a difference. Yeah, the closest that you can get to the source the better off you're going to be. I mean, imagine that. The closer you get to the source, God, <laughs> yeah. the better everything becomes, which yeah. is what I love about the happy, healthy life. And I think one of my takeaways that I got, in, and, I, and I know you got takeaways as well, even from the, the biohacker um, uh, convention or conference that we were at, is that, yeah, while there are so many gadgets that are out there, whether it's like, anything that's doing pulse electromagnetic frequency um, or if it's like uh, we were we saw this machine that was amazing it's called a biocharger and there's all this red light therapies that are out there sound therapies frequency healing so many different things that are out, all out there but here's what I saw is that these are all great things to be able to help support your body okay but they still aren't getting to the cause of why you have the issue that you have going on. That's why I love what it is that we do. Like even with our assessment, our assessment may look simple when somebody comes into our program on the outside because you're filling out this assessment, but what it's doing is it's giving us data. It's giving us information about you so that we can do the complicated thing for you and figure out what is the cause of why your metabolism isn't working the way it's supposed to. In other words, what is the cause of why your body isn't functioning and healing the way it's supposed to? That way we can be able to give you a step-by-step -step plan to be able to heal it that like you said is simple. We took the complicated part yeah. away from you. We did that, now it's simple. All you gotta do is just follow it and do it. And then you see the results happening every single day and now you have a solid, happy, healthy foundation that you can be able to work from. So the next thing you know, five weeks later, you've got this healthy foundation mm -hmm. and now go get the red light therapy or get the biocharger or the, the pimp or whatever that is to be able to help support yeah. that foundation that you have. And now when you are putting nutrients into your body, the cells in your body are detoxed they can be able to absorb the nutrients. Now with some of those energy um, healing frequencies, you can be able to make the cell more permeable, but you know what, if the cell was toxic to begin with it, it it's not really gonna matter. So it's just a support to help you be healthy for a longer period of time. So anyway, so that's what I got is that those things are great and they're a great support once you have a healthy foundation. Yeah, the foundation is key. You, you nailed it there. But I think a lot of times we're looking for that quick fix. We're trying to cut corners to get to a result. And that just never, ever works. In fact, we've owned red light therapy clinics and done all the biohacking stuff and chiropractic offices. And, you know, all there's so many great things. Red lights in that room right next to we us. We do. And how many people were coming into these clinics, yet their whole metabolism was a train wreck. And the quick fix was to lay under red light therapy to optimize mitochondrial function, to lose inches and to increase metabolic rate. But at the same time, without a strong metabolic foundation, 
where you're metabolically strong. We always talk about it. If you don't build your house on the rock, uh, it costs you money. If you've ever had a house that had a bad foundation, it costs you a lot of time and a whole lot of money. So metabolically speaking, if you don't have that strong rock foundation, everything you're stacking on is only going to be so effective. Why could you take, you know, a hundred people use the same, let's say we put them all under some pulsed electromagnetic frequency, but the ones that get the best result are the ones that are the healthiest metabolically, because it's the same thing with the food that you eat. You give 100 people the same amount of calories, some gain weight, some lose, some see no difference because it's the health of your metabolic profile. So this is where, you know, we've kind of put all the pieces together for, for you because we have a metabolic program that is simple. It is customized. It looks at all the nuances that are involved with healing somebody's metabolic uh, profile. And it's so fun because you get results very quickly. So I'm not saying I don't have anything wrong or anything against getting quick results. We get quick results, but the results that we get are because we're going to the cause of the problem. We always say, if you've got a weight issue, if you've got a health issue, stop asking, you know, how do I lose weight or how do I, you know, how do I fix X, Y, or Z symptoms? Start asking, how do I heal my metabolism? The questions that you're asking are going to get you quicker to the results that you want. But if you're asking the wrong questions, that'll take you down so many different rabbit holes. You'll get lost really quickly. And I know that's a frustrating piece for a lot of people. Yeah. So here's a question. How do I know if my metabolism is working or if it's not? Great question. Okay. We made that simple for you too. Go to metabolismscore.com right now. That's your action step. Go to metabolismscore.com. There's going to be a quiz there that's going to show you where your metabolism is at. And then from there, it'll give you instructions on what to do next. Yeah. Super simple. We created even a master class as well for people that really want to start diving in. If you've got an issue with your metabolism, if you go to h2thinmasterclass.com, I'll put all these in the show notes for you. That right there is your action step so that you can be able to have that foundation that you're looking for to be able to um, get to a uh, happier, healthier um, second 50, which is the documentary. That's that we the flex. Were, that's the flex right there. <laughs> so, so let's make that happen. That's your action step right there. That's your real talk for today is start getting your body happier and healthier by doing something versus just listening. Any other closing remarks? No, I think that's it. It's taking action, taking massive action. If you do nothing, nothing changes, but actually something does change. You get worse. Life doesn't stay the same. There are, there are no lateral moves, whatever you're not intentional with and that you work on and invest time and money, it goes by the wayside. Make sure that your health is number one, because if you lose your health, you are going to lose everything. The goal is never to be the richest guy in the cemetery. All the money in the world won't even get your health back. And it doesn't have to be expensive to be healthy. Once you know what health is and all the things that support that, life is more fun. Life is happier. Life is healthier. And that really is the dream. And that's the vision. So love you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. And we will be back soon. Yeah. Listen to what this dude is saying. <laughs> love and appreciate you, brother. Right, guys, love you. Love yep. you too, bro. Thanks for listening to the Happy Healthy Life Podcast. If you enjoy the show, make sure to follow them on Instagram at The H2 Life or on YouTube and Facebook at The Happy Healthy Guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and review the show wherever you listen to podcasts.